Hello everyone. So we decided to do a follow-up video to our studying video. Uh, although this studying video has had a lot of views and we've had a lot of people inquire and send us engine parts for studying, even Renesis engines for studying, which we do offer, um, we also learned within people's comments on the YouTube channel that there was quite a bit of criticism and doubt about the emphasis we put on the importance of studying. One of the other things we're going to follow uh, in this um, video is the process of doweling. And that's something we used to offer before we used to stud uh, the engines with multiple studs. We used to do three to five dowel pins in the combustion area of the engines, which is still a very effective way to do it. Long story short, the reason we don't solicit that for 13Bs is because the amount of effort to put the machine uh, to use to do five pieces one at a time, it's about the same amount of machine time and manpower to do three holes for dowel pinning as it is to do all 16 for studding, which is why it sort of pushed the dowel pinning away. Again, it does not mean the dowel pinning doesn't work. The dowel pinning is something we always use on 20B engines for reasons that we've gone on to explain in other videos. And we won't get into the reason we do doweling on 20B so much, but what we will show you is I think dowel pinning gives people a better picture of exactly what the importance of studying is because based off some of the comments we received, I think some people are a little confused. And I'll give you an example of some of the doubt or skepticism we found. So some people wrote in and said, I don't understand why all the emphasis on making sure the drilling is done as accurately as it is, a whole center is a whole center. That is false. Someone else says a hole is a hole. What difference does it make? You're taking advantage of a larger bolt. Doesn't matter if you have clearance. Also false. Okay. And some people just said enough emphasis on the dowels and studs in these videos. Let's just get on to the build. Well, we can understand that maybe some people do look at the video as being long enough as it is, and so maybe it gets a little boring for them. But people who are actually understanding the concept of studying or doweling, and people who actually are looking at doing that to their own engine, will really appreciate the value in the content of videos like we've done in the past, and even the one we're going to do now. So stand by, and we're going to show you some close-ups of studs and dowels compared to another common stud kit that's available that some of you may actually recognize. See you in a minute. Okay, so for a real live demonstration to really grasp what you're gaining by studying or doweling, we have one of our machined rotor housings with our dowels and these one piece studs, in this case a 20B stud that has a nut on either side that goes all the way through the block. And we have a rotor housing that was sent out to a shop who sells this stud kit. I'm sure some of you recognize this stud kit, okay? So let's examine what we have here. We have a bolt that looks very much like a stock Mazda bolt. It still has a 10 millimeter head. However, a 10 millimeter, pardon me, a 17 millimeter head. And instead of being a 10 millimeter bolt, it is a 10 mil by one thread, which is factory, but it has approximately a 12 millimeter shoulder, okay? Now, they don't look too high quality. They are definitely not precision ground. This is basically a large shouldered bolt that somebody has actually taken a die and cut these threads. Now, that's not a great way to cut threads. This is a cold rolled and ground and precision ground chromoly. This looks like some kind of mild steel, and again, cut with a die, okay? This is probably going to lose you strength. Now they supply you with six of these bolts. I'm not gonna call them studs because they're not studs. This is a stud, these are bolts. <sighs> Larger shoulder, what would be the gain? Absolutely nothing in this case, because the weak part of the bolt is now in the 10 by one thread, this narrowed area of this bolt. 
and that makes this bolt no stronger this way pulling apart and I will emphasize on one thing rotary engines do not pull apart we don't hear about people blowing their rear iron off like a cylinder head on a piston engine they do not blow apart some people who solicit bolts like this say well when you have a more rigid bolt let's just say even they did have a, a consistent thread pitch and thread diameter as the shoulder of the bolt can you gain from a larger bolt yes clamp load you can gain from clamp load but engines rotary engines don't blow apart we're not solving a lot now will it prevent the block from twisting perhaps yes with more clamp load but what's the easiest way to prevent the block from twisting well just like Mazda used their factory alignment pins here and here slip fit minimal clearance these areas can't move okay but the counter bore that the dowel pin is sunk into is only about a half inch deep and when that loads up the iron breaks so the purpose of a stud kit is to take the load off the factory alignment pins so you don't break your irons will it remove some of the harmonics like a lot of these other stud manufacturers uh, claim yes of course it will we, we've got one of the largest and best material studs so sure we will have the same clamp load advantages reduction in harmonics and vibration but the key again is this is the work that this company did they sold this customer six of these bolts okay these are all clearance holes with the minimal amount of movement that it takes to shift the rotor housing load onto the factory alignment pins and crack the block you would have to have much tighter clearances than this okay so these are going to be no different than just putting a stock 10 millimeter tension bolt through a clearance hole it's the exact same thing and because you only have the 10 by 1 thread pitch and diameter being the weakest part of the bolt this bolt is no stronger than factory tension bolts sorry if the manufacturers of these bolts are watching this video but I must insist everybody who's bought this stud kit is wasting their money stick with your factory tension bolts there is no reason to buy something like this strongly recommended if you want the strongest block that money can buy no matter what generation of engine it is send your irons and your rotor housings here we'll make you a package price on the stud kit or the dowels in the sake of a 20b application and we'll package it as best as we can please inquire on the website or through our email we don't like to answer questions about prices and quotes on YouTube but if you're serious and if you want to move forward with getting something done I will be happy to return your uh, your email or take your call next we're going to bring you over to the machine and show you the machine process and then show the pieces going together okay so as we explained earlier the goal here is to make sure that each stud and each dowel is machined precisely enough to where we get a factory slip fit just like the upper dowel pin so this pin and this pin and this pin these dowels are all slip fit tight clearance just like the factory dowels here same with the studs and I cannot again ex express the importance of having limited clearance this this stud has probably a thousandth and a half inch to two thousandths of an inch clearance same with these dowels there's no point in doing a stud kit or doweling if you're going to have clearance on the holes it's a complete waste of money we've talked about this before so uh, we will walk you through the steps that we're going to do to get this kind of fitment on every piece 
So by the time the block is ready to be assembled, we have the same line on every hole on each piece, slip fit all the way through. So we're going to load up the, we've already done the first two rotor housings for this 20B. We're going to do the third rotor housing and then we're going to move on do the front iron, the center iron, the thick iron and the rear iron. So we'll see you in a minute. So we're going for our uh, very first hole, which is going to be for one of the studs. And we'll be pre-drilling each hole, then going in with a boring bar. Then we're going to pre-drill the holes for the dowels. Then we're going to drill for the dowels and then ream for the dowels. And uh, that's the entire process. So we're just finishing up the last hole. And again, these uh, three holes that we've done are for studs. And they are one piece long 20B studs that go all the way through the block, okay? So we're gonna load in the boring bar, uh, chase these holes, and then we'll uh, move on to the doweling. Okay, so boring bar is gonna clean up these uh, three holes. And I don't know if uh, any of you know anything about a boring bar bit, but that is a bit that removes minimal amounts of material and uh, pretty much chases the hole to get you the accurate clearance that you're looking for. Uh, it's very difficult to do that in one pass with just a bit. Um, we get very close on this machine, but it's just a uh, precautionary and it just makes the uh, finish of the inside of the bore that much smoother and cleaner and more accurate. And last hole with the boring bar. And then we're going to move on to uh, doing the uh, pre-drilling for the large dowel pins. See you in a minute. Okay, so now we're going to do the pre-drill for the dowel pins. Um, it's a messy process, there's a lot of filing, so I'm going to turn on the vacuum and we're going to suck the filings in just so it doesn't clog up the bit. Be a little noisy. Uh, we'll show you probably the first part of the first hole and then we'll pick up when it's doing the last hole and then we'll move on to reaming from there. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so we've done our three holes. Now what you'll notice, even though we've done our pre-drill, is this dowel will not fit yet. We can't uh, install this yet. We obviously need to ream these holes. And again, by reaming, we get exactly the hole width we want and a perfect slip fit. So let's cut for a second and we will bring you back when we're uh, reaming and then we'll check the fitment with the dowel pin. So we're going to go ahead, do the reaming. Okay, so this hole looks about done. And I'll just give you a quick demonstration here. That's the fitment we want. Slip fit, very, very little clearance. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the matching 
cast irons on either side of this rotor housing. See you soon. Okay, so we've got our center iron mounted and we're gonna pre-drill some holes for both studs and dowels so it will match the rotor housing that we just did. Here we go. Okay, so all the pre-drilling is done. Now we're going to do the corresponding dowel holes. Okay, so what we've finished doing is that intermediate housing. We went on to finish the thick iron uh, for the um, uh, two rotor side of the uh, 20B. And we've already drilled our stud holes and our dowel holes. Uh, we didn't think there was a lot of point in showing you that process once again, but now that we've got the machine work done, namely our counter bores, for the dowels. And you can see how tight those fit in. Uh, we will now show you one of the rotor housings that of course we've already done all this work on as well. We're gonna go ahead and put this on and put in the factory alignment pins and that's the way that these dowel pins should drop in is just like those there, there, and there. You can see they're all countersunk down into the iron about uh, just over half an inch. And that's where we get uh, the majority of our strength. Bearing in mind that this particular 20B engine will be getting studs like this, half inch studs, that will go all the way through the block. Okay, so this one here is a 13B stud and we're gonna have studs around this motor that are the length of the 20B block that have a nut on either side to clamp the whole engine together. And of course, taking advantage of the outside of the precision ground stud, acting much like a dowel pin. All right, so that's uh, pretty much a wrap for uh, the uh, doweling and studding. Just wanted to go over again some of those details and uh, the importance, and um, we'll see you next time.